All right, in this video, we are going to look at how to diagnose air conditioning leaks like a rock star, because it just so happens to be that this little sporty thing is owned by a rock star. I've come to find out that my mild-mannered elderly neighbor up the street is Myron Pollock. He was the drummer in the 70s for a band called Sugarloaf, which many I know of you are going to immediately recognize as the band with the big hit in the 70s, Green-Eyed Lady. You would never know it looking at Myron. He is about as mild-mannered and low-key as they come. As a matter of fact, he's in church with his wife of over 35 years as we are filming this. So uh, you would never know it. Really cool guy. But we are going to help him out. I've already diagnosed that there is a air conditioning leak in this car. This video will go well in conjunction with a video on my pay channel, which is Diagnosis and Understanding of Air Conditioning. That video covers everything there is on understanding all the components of an air conditioning system and how to diagnose them properly. And what we are going to do is basically, we've already found that there is a leak in this system. The elephant in the room, of course, where is the leak so that we know how to fix it? So the purpose of this video will be just to look at different methods there are that you could use to detect a leak in a system once you diagnose it, depending on the available tools you have at home. And then on the pay channel, I will do the actual repair of the leak because you don't just swap out the part that has the leak in it and then just fill it up with refrigerant. You want to properly flush the system, replace orifice tube or expansion valve. You want to replace desiccant because it's been open to atmosphere and there could be moisture contamination in there. And then the other thing, of course, evacuating the system properly and all that. So I'll cover all that on my other channel. Right now, we're just going to look at some methods for doing the leak detection. So let's do that. So the first method we're going to use is actually the only method that I ever use for this kind of thing. And that would be a UV leak detection die that is built into the refrigerant. So what we did is uh, this leak actually we discovered at the beginning of the summer. So I added a can of this refrigerant with the leak detection. So a few weeks has gone by because I've just been unable to do any car stuff for a while. So it's been about a month and the car again is exhibiting the symptoms of having the leak. So now what we're going to do is see if we can find the UV dye that has leaked out of the system. My opinion, this is the easiest method. So that is what we are going to do now. I'm pretty sure I don't have to show you guys how to add refrigerant and everything. And if you need to know, it's all discussed in that other video. So let me get a UV detection light and let's see what we find. So this here is a UV light. Once the UV light comes in contact with the dye, it fluoresces an unmistakably noticeable bright green. And this is actually a method I use for lots of different fluid leak detections, but especially on the AC, this is really, really helpful. So let's see if we can find the leak. So we need to turn out the lights and we'll see how well this shows up in the camera. Actually, it works out pretty good. So we can see actually, if I zoom in right here, what kind of we're looking for as a positive result, but this is not actually the source of the leak. So you can see there's some green around the gauge port there, but that's of course just from connecting and disconnecting the gauge port when adding the refrigerant. So there's just always a little bit there. But what I wanna do is scan up and down the system and when you find the leak, you will know it. So usually I like to start with the high pressure side because that's the most likely to have the leak. And one of my favorite places to look is definitely on the condenser because it's on the front of the vehicle, it's open to road hazards, it's a high pressure side, all the variables add up to it being a potential leak source. Now I'm looking down at the condenser and as we scan along here, oh, well, there you go, right there. Let's see if we can get a more consistent view of that right there. Okay, leak detection done. We clearly can see that there is indeed a leak on the condenser. So how easy was that? All right, it should be pretty clear why that is pretty much my exclusive system for leak detection. It is extremely easy to do. These things are available from any auto parts store. So obviously a very effective method, very quick and easy. But that's not to say that it isn't without a few drawbacks. 
One of the main ones is the air conditioning system does have to be operational in order for you to build up the pressure to have the dye leak out of the system. If the system has been completely evacuated of refrigerant because the leak has been so long or is large enough, then of course you would have to recharge the system, pretty much wasting a lot of money on refrigerant and the dye that's going to be quickly lost anyway in order to find the leak. So it may not be optimal in that case because there's an expense involved with it obviously. Another minor kind of drawback with the system is the potential to fall for false positives. And as a matter of fact, we saw a false positive around the pressure port, which happens all the time for obvious reasons. But things like motor oil, engine coolant, a lot of these fluids autofluoresce. So if you have leaks with those systems, you might falsely think that it is your refrigerant leak when actually it's just autofluorescence from another fluid leak. So you kind of have to keep that in mind as well. And then a final drawback with this particular system is the idea that if some clown before you, which I typically have happen, has filled the system and sprayed the whole engine down with the dye because he didn't know how to do it properly or whatever, well then this method becomes fairly useless because you're going to have dye all over the engine. So a really good technique before you do this test is actually to really clean the engine out thoroughly, pressure wash it, and that'll make the dye detection a lot easier. Now, now that we know where this leak is, let's try some other methods that you might also be tempted to try if you don't have a dye detection kit. The next tool that I have available for this kind of thing is a refrigerant leak detector and do not be fooled by the snap-on name. I am sure this thing is older than dirt and as a matter of fact I am confident that this is only going to be for an R12 system, although it should work with an R134 system. I don't doubt that at all, although I think the sensitivity would be a bit of an issue, certainly on the R134A. Now, as cool as this gizmo may seem, there are going to be a couple of disadvantages with it. The first and not the least of which is it generally will only detect a live leak. So again, if the system is completely discharged, you're going to have a little bit of an issue finding your leak, obviously. The second thing is that getting the probe into certain places is going to be a lot more difficult than just looking with the UV dye flashlight. So what we're going to do is, because this system is almost completely discharged. What I'm going to do is bypass the low pressure switch so that we can get the compressor to operate and then hopefully we can get enough pressure that we would detect the leak with this system. I've actually never actually detected a leak with the system so this may not work, we'll see. Well, hopefully you can hear it beeping. And indeed as I get closer to where that leak was, Well, check that out. All right, well, pretty cool. And actually, we should still be able to check the residual even with the engine off, I would think. So let's just try that. And it does seem to be less sensitive now, doesn't it? Oh, but it does. Yeah, not quite as sensitive, but there is still some residual refrigerant that it's detecting. Interesting. All right. Well, at least I didn't waste my money on this. Well, I have to admit, I really thought this thing wasn't going to work at all, and it actually did work fairly well. Now, that said, there were, as mentioned, the disadvantages of getting the probe into the location. That was actually not nearly as easy as just looking at the die. And then the second thing about this is actually pinpointing the leak was not as easy as you might think with a high-tech device like this. So actually there's two modes of sensitivity. You need to start with the high sensitivity, get to the range of where the leak is, switch to the low sensitivity to help pinpoint the location. But even then it doesn't really pinpoint the leak. And to be honest, the pattern from the UV die in my opinion, really helps pinpoint the location much better than this does. So anyway, it did work. 
All right, we are going to now move on to another system, and that would be taking advantage of a pressure in the system, whether the system is already pressurized, whether we pressurize it, and maybe also if we apply a negative pressure to the system, we might be able to find leaks with any of those methods. The most obvious of which would be the traditional bubble test with soapy water. So if the system is still pressurized, we should be able to operate the system, spray down with soapy water, and then we would be able to find bubbles forming at the leak. I absolutely do not believe there is any chance this is going to work at all. Now we have a little bit of a challenge in this system in that it is not pressurized. So what I am going to do is a couple things. First of all, we'll just see if we can get it to work by my bypassing the low pressure switch and taking advantage of whatever compression we can make. But then also we might be able to use air compressor to pressurize the system and look for a leak with the bubble water that way. So let's try one or both of those methods and see if we get lucky. All right, guys, we've got a little bit of a change of plan here. So I've got the grill removed and everything so I can access the condenser. You can actually see this corner region is where that dye leak was detected. And the thing is, is what I've decided to do is I'm going to do a positive control on this test. So I've charged the system up with the time it takes for the filming. And especially when I film the repair for the other channel, I am just not going to have time to do it this weekend. So I need to find out what I need to replace on this thing for that repair anyway. And I'm imagining it's going to be, of course, this condenser and I have to special order the part anyway. So I can't let this old guy go without air conditioning in his car for a couple of weeks. That's just not acceptable. So what I've done is I've recharged the system. It'll easily last him a month and he'll have his air conditioning. But also for us, it ensures that now when we do the bubble test, there's like 250 PSI here, so we should definitely see some bubbles if this test is going to work. If we don't see bubbles here, then no amount of things we do with an air compressor or anything would possibly work. So I am going to spray this down with this soap water. And we can see that nothing's bubbling. Matter of fact, I actually see the damaged part of the condenser right now. Um, a prime location, of course, would be where the high pressure line feeds into the condenser. There's no bubbles forming around there. But there's actually a divot in the condenser here, which is clearly where the damage is. And I'm spraying right in there. And I don't see any bubbles forming. And I'm not surprised by that. Usually these leaks are, are pretty slight when they take months for the system to discharge. So, given that, yeah, there's no bubbles forming at all. Um, given that, my next idea was going to be a smoke test on the system. And I really don't see that that's going to work because we're talking, you know, at the most that I can deliver, like 20 PSI. And I just don't see that we're going to squeeze smoke out of this system. It's kind of the equivalent of using a cooling system tester to look for a head gasket leak. It's just, it just doesn't have the pressure. So we'll, we'll maybe try it anyway. But yeah, this test is a bust. Well, the only good thing about that was now I can sit in the car and enjoy the air conditioning and cool down a little bit. But as you can see, that test did not work for this application. But mind you, we have a very slow leak here. I know we can go like a month before I would have to recharge this system again. So I'm really not surprised by that. On other systems with a much faster leak, the bubble test may work. So I still do want to just try the smoke test just to try it. Obviously, I can't do that now because I've just charged the system up. But in a couple weeks when the guy comes back to me, the system might be discharged by then and we'll have to get it discharged anyway to do the repair. So that would be a good time to do the smoke test. So what I'm going to do is we're going to kind of jump in time a little bit and we're going to do a smoke test when I do the repair on this thing. So let's jump ahead in time right now and see if the smoke test works. All right, guys, well, I stand corrected. Check this out. I hope I can show this on the camera, but there is indeed, if you look, there is a little divot that is bubbling. Let me zoom in on it.
So if you see, there's a little divot there. I'll give it a moment. But it is actually bubbling. Now, mind you, I'm on an extreme zoom here. And this is not something that I would have ever found had I not known already where the leak was from the dye. But hopefully that's showing up. Let's see if we can get a better shot here. Get the light right on it there. That should be... That should be showing up, but there are indeed some bubbles forming there. Let me zoom in just a little more. All right, that should show up. The light's right on it. But uh, again, this test really is pretty insignificant because the only way you're going to find that is if you already know where the leak is. But obviously, this condenser needs to be replaced. All right, guys, we're going to close out this video, and we're going to try to see if we would be able to detect this leak with a smoke test if you happen to have a smoke machine here. So I've got all the parts now that I've needed to order for this repair and we'll do that on the other channel. But what I'm gonna do is very simply, uh, for those of you that are lucky enough to have a smoke machine, we'll see if this works. But I'm just gonna hook up my smoke machine to my service port on my gauges. I'm sure you could also go through like the high gas port or something like that. But this should work, and I'm just going to crank it up as much as I can. Um, probably about 15 PSI, I think, is the most I can go here. And let me just verify that there is smoke. Oh, yeah, definitely. All right, so let's let this cook for a second and see if we detect some smoke out of the confirmed leak in the condenser. All right, well, I have been running this for some time, and I can tell you we're expecting the leak to come right from out of there. We're at, uh, the most that I can seem to get is about 25 PSI or so. That's not nearly going to be enough, in my opinion, considering that we had to have around 200 PSI to get the bubble test to work. So it's just not enough pressure. I don't see any trace of smoke here. So again, for this specific application, I'm going to say the smoke test does not work. Obviously, on a larger leak, you might have some luck with that. And as a matter of fact, the smoke test would be the optimal way to find a larger leak anyway because your system would be discharged. So what we need here is a positive control, obviously, for those of you that are scientifically minded. And let's just do a positive control to confirm that we would find smoke in a large enough leak. So since I've got to replace this thing anyway, we can go ahead and loosen this up. All right, let's get a light on there. All right, just a little better lighting there. You can definitely see the smoke test would work on a larger leak. So obviously this method valid. Well, there you have it, folks. Several methods validated for how to locate a leak in an AC system. And as you can see, some methods much, much better than others. But that will conclude this video. I will continue the series on Schrodinger's Box Quantum Mechanics. For those of you that are members, I will show you how to properly replace an AC system component. You don't just plug and play it and then recharge the system. It's not quite like that. You got to replace some other parts as well, no matter what the component is that was damaged. We'll show that in that video. But for the rest of you guys, keep on trucking.